My name is Max Eli. I'm the International Color Director and the creator of J. Beverly Hills Hair Color. Uh, I'm a hairdresser, obviously. <laughs> I love hair, and it's given me a wonderful, wonderful career. Um, I Next month, actually, I will have my license now for 33 years of doing hair. Wow, time flies. And it seems like yesterday, but um, it's such a wonderful career if you focused and you want to make money in it and you want to actually excel in hair. I had no idea I got into it for the art, how much money you can actually make behind the chair. <laughs> Thank God I'm not a doctor. Because <laughs> you can make a lot of money doing hair and you have the artistic ability to make people feel good. And that's really something special. And I'm going to talk a lot about hair color and how hair color works. And hair color, and I'm going to talk about hair color in general and how hair color works to help you guys understand it because it's it's actually quite easy once you get it down to understanding the science of hair structure and hair porosity, hair texture, what hair does. Because we as artists, we don't get to paint on a white wall, right? Everything we paint on is different. And understanding the, the canvas that we paint on, the hair that we paint on, what it's going to do and how it's going to affect it is probably the most important thing about hair and understanding it. So today I'm going to try to make it really easy for you to understand hair color <laughs> and open your mind to how it works. Okay? Okay. So we're going to talk about the good old color wheel. I used to hate it. And some of you guys probably hate it too. <laughs> but it should be your very best friend because it will make you more money than you can imagine. And I'm actually quite shocked when I'm out traveling the world how many hairdressers, oh awesome, how many hairdressers actually don't understand the color wheel? And it is your key to success. So understanding how this wheel works and applying it to hair is what's going to make you successful behind the chair. So, um, our color line is a little bit different than a lot of color lines on the market. You've got to think about technology, first of all, and how fast technology advances. Like when I started doing hair, we didn't have these. <laughs> I would have never known that you could have a little square thing that you could make a phone call with and actually take a picture of someone and send it to a friend across the world. In seconds they can view it. So think about the technology and hair color. Hair color has been around a long time. Well over on the market in 1898. Isn't that awesome? There was hair color before cars. Before cars, they were coloring hair. But technology's changed a lot. A lot. Especially in the last 20 years. When I started doing hair, hair color was a professional service only. You could not get your hair colored out of a box that you could buy it at CVS or Walgreens. It was unavailable. It was a professional service only. But now, they show them on TV, you can color your hair, do an ombre, <laughs> highlights, lowlights, right? And we have to fix it, <laughs> or try to fix it, or try to get it out of the hair. It was only a professional service. And I watch companies around the world talk about diversion of products. Diversion is like when you see a high-end product or a professional supposed line that's only supposed to be sold in the salons on the retail market. And almost every brand out there has diverted their products. And I understand that. Like if you're a salon owner and you buy a bottle of shampoo for $5, you can retail it for $10. You double your money. It's great for salons until all those products are in the grocery store or the pharmacy across the street. But far more than the diversion of a retail product or a shampoo or a conditioner is the diversion of hair color. Think about that. It's our service dollars. How much money can you make out of a tube of hair color? You don't just take it for eight bucks of a tube or whatever and oh, I'm going to do your hair for 16. <laughs> it's not like shampoo. It's our service dollars as a professional. It's our money behind the chair. And you can make a lot of money off of a tube of color, especially if you're doing highlights because you're mixing it like two to one. <laughs> I can get like five highlights out of a tube. That's bank for me, right? Now they're telling me they can do it at home, out of a box, on TV. It's really frustrating for me. So my passion is actually about getting hair back in the salons where it belongs. I teach around the world, all over the place. And I was in a school last week, and I look at these 
students that are so eager, like you guys are going to get your license, where in the world are you going to get your clientele? Where are they going to come from? Your family and friends? I'll do it for <laughs> half off. Who's going to come to you to get their hair done? I know hairdressers that have been doing hair for 20 years that are good, and they have gaps in their books on Saturday. Wow. And there's commercials on TV telling all the people they can do it at home, out of a box. And then they finally call the hairdresser to fix it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shave it off, right? <laughs> I can't get that color out of your hair. So to me, it's about getting people back in the salons where they belong. And it's going to be through education. And it's going to be through creating the best hairdressers, right? Create beautiful, glamorous, gorgeous hair. Because your best, best way to build your business is through your own work. I don't care how many signs you put up, or a commercial, or a radio ad, or a television commercial. Anything will never build it as good as your own work. Because when someone sees the hair, they're like, wow, your hair is beautiful. Who did that? Right? So the best is through good work. So have pride in the work you do and do good hair. Every day someone says, how can I charge the amount of money you charge? How can I make the amount of money you do? And the first thing I tell them is, how about do good hair? I'm shocked how many lazy hairdressers there are on this planet when I'm traveling around. Application. There's two main things that I see wrong. Formulation and application. Who taught them to apply color? My goodness. No wonder it didn't color. You didn't even put any color on the hair. You missed a section, honey. What? Your color didn't work. Well, we're, well, there's no color touching the hair there. <laughs> wow, application. I'm shocked. And so, you can, you can, I can mix four bowls of color and it can be the same formula and give it to four different hairdressers and four different heads they're going to put it on and they're all going to look the same. I don't think so, right? It's a formula that's going to match on them. It's like telling my marketing team, I did a model the other day and they're like, oh my God, it's just beautiful, what you use? And I told them what I used and they said, okay, we're going to put those four tubes in a box and we're going to make an ad that we'll sell them that everybody can do that color. What? If I put that same formula on you and the same formula on you, are you going to have the same hair color? I mean, you can't do that. It doesn't work that way. We're not painting on white, right? <laughs> We're painting everybody's hair is different. And marketing people don't understand that. They just thought, oh, we can box up the three tubes and they're going to have the same color. <laughs> Everybody can buy those three tubes and they'll all have the same color. I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. You have to learn how to do hair. So today we're going to talk about how to do hair and proper hair. How's that? Yeah. Hate, right? Because I used to hate it, now I love it. <laughs> So you should learn to love it because it will make you money once you understand it. There are three primary colors. What are they? Red, blue, and yellow. Awesome. And if you mix the three of them together, what do we get? Okay. When we mix all three, we get brown. Right? Brown lives in the center of the wheel. So if we mix the two together, we get secondary colors. And they are yellow and red make little, orange, right? Blue and red make what? Violet and yellow and blue make green. And if you mix the primary and the secondary together, we get what? Um, tertiary. Tertiary. tertiary colors, we get our blue violet, red violet, red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, and blue green. Notice as I went around the wheel, it's not orange red or orange yellow. Your primary is always the dominant of the thickness, right? So now we made a big old beautiful color wheel. How do we apply this color wheel to hair? What do we do with this? How does it work with hair? Anybody? Yeah, you look at this and then brown hair, you have to figure out what's underneath that. If they ever dyed their hair, or um, if it's brown based, so you're going to figure it has red in it, right? I think they all do. Uh -huh. See, everybody's made of red, yellow, and blue that makes a brown. If they have really dark hair, they probably have more blue in it than they do have yellow in it. But they have all three of the primaries, right? So if we start to lighten someone's hair or take their natural color, right, and make it lighter, we're removing the pigment from their hair, okay? And when we remove the pigment from their hair, the first of the three colors, the red, yellow, and blue, is going to be the darkest primary that's going to leave their hair first which is blue, right? So as you start to lift hair, I don't care what you're using to lighten the hair, you can use bleach, 
lemon juice, sun in, peroxide, I don't care. Something that's going to open up the cuticle and start to take the pigment out of the hair, right? And once the pigment starts to come out of the hair, the first pigment to leave the hair is the darkest of the three primaries. That's your blue. Yeah. And once the blue's out of the hair, that leaves two other primaries, red and yellow, right? right. And what color do they make? Orange. Nice shade of orangutan, right? <laughs> Every day I did a client yesterday, she said, just so you know, Max, my hair has a little tendency to turn a little bit orange. Really? <laughs> I'm shocked. I've never in 33 years of painting hair had someone turn natural. <laughs> right? It's not going to happen. Oh, my hair has a tendency to turn a little bit orange. Really? <laughs> and they don't, they don't get it because they don't know, but we know as hairdressers, right? And you can keep lightening the hair. Pretty soon the red will leave, and guess what? They're going to look like a banana, right? You can keep lightening. Once the yellow's gone, oops, sorry, honey, there went your hair. Oops. It's gone. <laughs> right? Pastel yellow, it's like straw. <laughs> so, hair's made of the three primaries. So when you lighten hair, the pigments leave the blue, then the red, then the yellow. But the hair is just not going to turn orange and yellow. It goes through a lot of really undesirable tones, right? <laughs> red oranges, all these different shades. So you have to think about levels of hair. And you guys have probably learned that, but we talk about levels. There's only 10 levels to hair. There's nothing lighter than 10. There's nothing darker than a 1. There's 10 levels to hair. So the level system is a measurement of depth, one being the darkest and ten being the lightest. Now I know companies make 12 series or 11 series or even some I've seen 13 series or ultralight series, but what they are are a very translucent ten. So that's another word for you right there, translucent. Who can tell me the difference between translucent and opaque? Any idea? Okay, if I have a balloon, like a, if I, out of a plastic bag, I grab a brand new balloon, a blue one, right? It's flat, there's no air in it. It's blue. It's opaque. But as I grab that balloon and I start to blow air into the balloon, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and almost to pop, but not yet. It's still blue, but I can see through it. There's light through it. It actually looks lighter. Mm -hmm. It becomes translucent. Okay? So there are 10 levels to hair, and at level 10, companies make translucent hair colors that you can see through. They light reflect it. They're more translucent. And that's what your high lift tints are, your 12 series, your 11 series. But they're not lighter than a 10. They're just transparent. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah establish that there's 10 levels to hair, if we start to lighten the hair, it's going to go through 10 really undesirable shades as the blue and the red and the yellow leave the hair. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's what we paint on as hairdressers. It's our canvas. See, when someone comes to me to get their hair done and they have this picture and like, oh, Max, I want this color right here, the first thing that I look at is what level is that hair color? What level do they want to be? Do they want to be a 5 or a 7 or a 9? Because if I know what level they want to be, I know exactly what it's going to lift to underneath. Does that make sense? Then I know what color I'm painting on top of my canvas. If a client shows me a picture that's a level 7, right? I know 7 is orange. So the canvas that I'm going to paint on today is orange. No matter what, she's going to be orange. Does she want an orange end result for the end? Or does she want no orange in her hair? Right? So think of the levels as you lift. So at level one, level one the hair is blue. It's just so dark you can't see through it. Level two, blue violet, three violet. Level four is actually if I put bleach on someone with dark hair like yours, is where you very first start to see the pigment coming out. And you're going to see like a red violet and instantly it comes red really quick. Then you're going to see red-orange, orange, yellow-orange, orange, yellow, and 
Tin is just a pale, pale yellow like the inside of a banana. Put a picture in your head for each one of them. That's what's made it easy for me. Because there's only nine levels that we, we don't even have to neutralize a level three or level two because the pigment's still in the hair. So it's level four and above where we have to really start paying attention to what we're painting on. So if that client comes to me and the picture on the magazine I know is a level seven, about this light right here, I know no matter what I'm gonna do today, I'm painting on an orange canvas. Does that make sense? If she wants to be a level six, just a little bit lighter brown, I know today my canvas is red orange. I know what I need to neutralize it. Because if you go directly across the wheel, those are the tones that will counteract or they will neutralize a shade that you don't want to see. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if someone is a level two, very dark, like this one right here, and they want to just be a little bit lighter brown, like a level five, I know no matter what I'm going to do to their hair, I'm painting on red. Because their hair is going to turn red. Right? Mm -hmm. And what eliminates the red? So I can use a level five green based color and I'll get a natural level five. Does that make sense? Yes. And it becomes very easy. Your most difficult clients in the world are the clients that are going to sit in your chair and say, I don't want it to turn red or I hate orange or like the girl I did yesterday that says my hair, just so you know, Max, it turns a little bit orange. Okay, right, right, right I know that. <laughs> Like, your easiest colors in the world are the ones who want to make orange or red or copper. That's really easy. You can do that at home with sun in. It's a lady that sits in your chair and says, oh, it, it's still red. No, that's gold, honey. I'll show you red. We make some incredible fierce red. It's right here. This is red. But isn't it funny when they see light? Because the sun is warm and the sun is yellow. And when light hits anything, it looks warmer. And I'll watch them walk out of my salon and they'll roll down their rearview mirror looking, oh my God, they come running back and it's red. I'm like, no, honey, that's gold. <laughs> right? So the most difficult clients are the clients who don't want more. They want it to look natural. And if you can master that, you can do anything in hair color because who can't make copper hair? That one's really easy. Right? It's the ones who don't want red, don't want gold, don't want orange, don't want brass. If you can master those and control the unwanted warmth, you're ahead of the game with hair. And I'm shocked how many hairdressers, when I'm traveling the world, they don't know this. They don't know how to use it. And they look at a client and they're like, she wants to be lighter. I'm just going to use my 40 volume and my ash and hope it gets light enough and cool enough. And they foil their hair. And every 15 minutes they run over and they like open up the foil to look at her. <laughs> you shouldn't have to open the foil ever like if you formulated it right you could do the next client finish the client charge her and by the time just shampoo her out it should go right to the level you want and be the exact tonal value that you want to see in there it's not that hard but I watch them in the back room and it makes me laugh it's better than going to the comedy store on Sunset Strip <laughs> like watching them do hair because <laughs> they don't get a clue they have no idea you should know exactly what level you want to make the hair what lives underneath and do the proper formula and it'll become really really easy if you do it right imagine I was talking imagine if baseball was colored balls right and someone threw an orange ball now if I grab a blue baseball bat I'm gonna hit a home run so I'm going to nail that orange bowl. But if it's coming at me and the sun's hitting, I'm like, is it orange? Or is, it, is there a little red in it? I'm just going to make sure I'm going to grab a blue bat, a green bat, and a little bit of a violet bat. I'm going to knock it to a foul ball. <laughs> foul hair color sucks. You have to hit a home run every time. And it's really easy if you know what level you're going to make them. Does that make sense? Get a home run when you do hair. Miss it, all you have to do is mix another bowl. See, like when it's a haircut and it's on the floor, you're done. Like, <laughs> I'm done. But see, with the hair color, I just have one more step. <laughs>
And they're like, oh, my hairdresser's so smart, he makes four bowls, they didn't know you were correcting everything you're doing. <laughs> right? He's so smart. <laughs> but at least you can mix another bowl, right? And fix it. But once it's on the floor, you're done. So hair color is forgiving. So don't be afraid of it. Learn to work it. And learn to understand this. If you get this down, you'll master hair color. And I use it to enhance color, not just neutralizing, but colors that touch each other around the wheel, they actually complement or enhance. For example, I try to always tell people, why would I do solid hair coloring? Just solid one color. Think about it. Virgin hair that has never been colored ever. Is it one flat color? I've never seen it in my life. Virgin hair has many vari variations of tones through it, a lot of movement. In natural hair. <laughs> so why do we create flat hair color? They can do that out of the box at home. Right? Give them something they can't create. Put movement through the hair. Let the light hit it differently. And make money, right? So if I have a client that, for example, we got a client that comes in, she wants to be a red hair. Okay? Now this is where you have to start painting and I don't know if you've been learning yet, you have to, um, warm and cool. The difference between warm and cool, right? Yellow's warm, blue's cool. Red can be either warm or cool. If you add more blue to it, it's cool red. If you add more yellow to it, it's a warm red, right? It's the only one that can be both. So if I have a redhead that comes in based on her skin, her eyes, like if she has tons of freckles and little rich brown eyes with like gold flakes through it, she's warm. If she has very fair skin, porcelain skin, with blue eyes, she's going to be more cool. So based on the reds that I'm going to do on her. So let's say she is a cool red. She has a very fair skin and blue eyes. If I'm going to make her base or the main majority of her hair red, the best highlights that's going to look on someone with cool skin is going to be a lighter red, or a red violet, a lighter red violet. Or the low lights that you're going to put in will be a darker red or a darker red violet. If she has warm skin or freckles and brown eyes, I'm going to use a lighter red or a red orange for her highlights. Or for the low lights, a darker red or a darker red orange. Does that make sense? Most complimenting. What you don't want to put around the red are yellow highlights. This isn't Las Vegas, we're not making hooker hair. <laughs> right? We're making gorgeous hair, glamorous hair. Let's learn to make beautiful hair first. I mean, I love funky hair color, don't get me wrong. That's why we make them. And you can have some crazy fun with hair color. But how many ladies pull up in their Range Rover and Aston Martin that want these colors? <laughs> The people who want these colors drive skateboards. They don't have money. Right? One person pull into my salon that's got the checkbook that wants emerald. I love it. I think it's awesome. I'm a hairdresser. So let's learn to make gorgeous hair first. Beautiful, gorgeous hair. You can have all kinds of fun with the crazy hair and the fun colors but making beautiful, beautiful hair is what's going to drive your business. And it's understanding this wheel and understanding how to make beautiful hair and how to make colors that are going to complement each other. Does that make sense? And once you start understanding that, you can go much lighter, but still use the complementing shades that wrap around the wheel and you'll create beautiful hair. And I might do three colors. If I have someone who's cool, I might make the base a level five red I might do a level 7 red violet, a level 4 red violet through there and get a, a lot of variations going through that hair, but it's going to complement their blue eyes and their skin. Does that make sense? So learning to understand this wheel will make you more money than you can ever imagine. Do you guys understand it a little bit more now today? Let's see. If I have a client that comes in who's a natural level 3, and she wants to be a six natural, just natural. I want to be a lighter brown. If I'm going to make her a six natural, what color is the canvas I'm going to paint on today? Red, orange. Red, orange. 
Does she want red orange? No. no. What's going to eliminate it? Green. Blue green. Because if I use just blue, it's going to get rid of the orange, but she's going to have a lot of red in the hair. If I use just green, it's going to get rid of the red, right? But she's still going to have orange in the hair. You need both blue and green. And the only place you're ever going to need blue and green at the same time is level six. You should go even one level lighter. The red's gone now. You better not use any green there. Mm -hmm. Right? Now you're going to over control and you get a mousy, muddy, ugly, muted color. Now I need only blue. Does that make sense? Yeah. I couldn't get it because when I first started doing hair, the color lines back in that day only made one ash. They didn't make blue and green and violet. They just made one. And it was called ash. And my instructor told me, he said, Max, whenever you're lightening the hair, just use your ash. You'll be fine. I wish I could punch her. Because <laughs> it didn't work. The first client, I remember, I graduated from school a long time ago. But the first color line I used was Fermisi. And it was Italian name. I had to have it. It was Italian. It was from out of another country. I had that Fermisi color. And um, they had a green-based ash. Only green. Right? And I had a lady come in that got her hair done down the street at another salon, and her hair looked like a pumpkin. She said, I hate my hair. It looks like an orange. I don't want no orange. And I'm like, oh, I can fix it. I looked at her hair, and she was yellow-orange. So what level was she? Eight. She was an eight, so I grabbed my eight ash and my five volume, and I thought, well, I'll just fix it really quick. But my ash was green. Oh, God. You know what the yellow hair turned like with yellow and green mixing? It looked like the inside of a sick baby's diaper. Oh. <laughs> Very yellow, greenish, muted, not desirable tone. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, what I do? I use the ash, what my teacher taught me to do. Right? It didn't work. Because how can green fix yellow orange? Green is made of yellow. So I'm adding more yellow, right? right? Just didn't work. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So I called actually their hotline. And I'm like, you don't make a, a blue ash or a violet ash? They said, don't worry, we make mixers. We have a blue mix, just squirt it right in there with the green. You don't look like concrete. Like now I've got too many. No, I don't. I, does that make sense? I need no green, just blue or violet. So I started looking for other color lines. And Goldwell made a blue ash. I'm like, wow, and they had all these toys, these cans and bowls you could squirt through the bottom, and I had to have it. Top chick? It's, yeah. I'm like, what is this stuff? It's really good. They've got guns and <laughs> I think, <laughs> color gun. Fun. I had to, and I ordered it for my salon. Now I didn't have any green. I became an educator for Goldwell, actually. I had already been teaching Goldwell for one year, and I had a lady come in to my salon, who was dark again, who had tried to lighten her hair just to go a lighter brown. She was like a natural level three. She was a Latin lady. And she just wanted to be a five. And they turned her red brown. She said, I hate red hair. Why didn't it just turn brown? I said, don't worry, I'm the educator. I can fix it. <laughs> so she's level five. What's my RPC? Red, right? I didn't know, but I used my 5A. 5A in Goldwell was a blue base. If I paint blue on top of red, what color is her hair going to turn? She walked out looking like an eggplant. She was mahogany. And I told her I was going to fix it and make it brown. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't understand what happened. But blue on red is going to make a, some shade of purple. <laughs> it's inevitable, right? Understanding the law of color. What would have gotten rid of the the red. I should have used my Fermisi on her. <laughs> so as a salon owner, I had several color lines. One that could do what I needed to do for each one. Because one couldn't do everything for me. So as a developer of hair color, I want to make everything for you. Because it changes at every level. How can you have one? Like I'm going to need green here. I'm going to need blue-green here, I'm going to need blue here, I'm going to need blue-violet here, I'm going to need violet there. Right? 
if it's really supposed to work right. <laughs> and that's what we have. And that was really important for me to do, because like I said, who can't make warm hair? Copper is really easy to make. <laughs> you can do that with lightener <laughs> and no shade. <laughs> and it will turn orange, right? Yeah. It's inevitable. But learning to control unwanted colors is the key to hair color. It's very easy. 